Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. I've got another fun, exciting unboxing day for you guys today. So, some kind of interesting stuff, a couple of guitars, we've just got a whole bunch of things, but let's start with the big Mac Daddy of this unboxing episode. This is something I picked up from the Gibson Mod Collection. Now, normally, I do the full review and demos, but let's be real here, guys. I've documented so many modern-day Les Paul customs, and on top of that, I'm a little bit overwhelmed because I bought a whole bunch of stuff at the end of the year to review and document, so I've got bigger fish to fry than this, but I definitely wanted to share this custom color with you guys. So this, I think it was from two weeks ago. They called it Bronze Burst Metallic. So let's go ahead and pop this one open and see what it looks like in person because I'm kind of excited. It reminded me of like a black hole. Let's see if it has a good appearance in person. Ooh, that's fascinating. Like, I don't think I would have ever thought of doing this color myself, but it definitely has a cool space theme to it. So, it's brown with black, but yet it doesn't have too much sparkle metallic shine to it. It kind of reminds me of Reverse Silver Burst. That is a finish that exists. We did a Would You Rock or Not on it at one point in time, where it's got the black in the center, but instead of silver, it's bronze. So this is Reverse Bronze Burst in a roundabout way. I think I just convinced myself on this one, because at first I was like, eh. I don't know, but now that I've justified this finish color, it makes a bit more sense. Personally, I would have preferred it if it was a straight up teardrop shape, but they decided to do the perimeter burst. So you can see a little bit poking out right here on the pick guard. You've got some here by the neck. Then it looks like other modifications that they've made include the uh, switch tip does not have the poker chip on it. But hey, we finally get to see these ambered color knobs in the flesh. I will say those are actually really cool. They just remind me of heavily aged 70s speed knobs. I do like those, that's cool. Looks like we've got the regular ebony fretboard. It would have been really cool if they would have did a bronze burst or like a sparkle black matching headstock up there, or maybe gave it some sort of like a bronze burst stinger, but this is one of those top reef and only type guitars. Very cool. What kind of case candy did we get? Usual warranty evaluation and our COA. But only one pick this time. Come on, Gibson, you normally give me two. <laughs> but once again, they, they do the brown backplate, which I think it actually looks okay with this finish this time. I mean, because there's some brown on it. But why are they giving us a, a black backplate? I guess brown and black. Now that I think about it, that really works well, having the mismatch on this one. So I take back my criticism. We'll call that a feature this time, but they've also mismatched those before. So if you're interested in learning more about the mod collection and demo shop about Gibson, I do a weekly recap, usually towards the back half of the week or very early on, where I show you everything that they list. But to be quite frank and honest with you guys, this one's not for me. Like, I thought I was going to like it, but what, what, what arrived is definitely not what I was expecting in the slightest. So definitely not a personal collection one or anything, but I appreciate them trying to be unique. The next up... I've got something in this gigantic package. No, it's not a guitar. <laughs> like last time where we have three guitars and something like this. This is just something I bought to help me create really nice B-roll. Oh yeah, that's green. Okay, so what do we got here, and how do I plan on using this? This is like a professional like gym mat type thing, you know, that they do like uh, flips and tumbles and stuff on. But I thought it is just about the right size for a guitar right here. Like if I had it on a stand, that if I hang this up in the background, it could kind of give me that green screen effect and I could potentially remove it. Or since it's got this whole multicolor setup going on, we could also use it for blue, like just for a fun background if I really wanted to do something like that. And at the end of the day, if that didn't work, it'll help me film B-roll because now I have a nice little mat that I can kneel on without destroying my knees. But that's definitely a nice quality mat. And if you want something like this, I'm not sponsored to tell you this in the slightest. I bought this myself. It was just a, the company's called We Sell Mats. They sell on Amazon. But next here is the clickbait of this video. 
I had two guitars returned to me. Well, not technically returned. I, I don't take returns. I'm an as-is seller because I'm not really like a traditional shop in that aspect. I'm more of a YouTube channel that shows you guitars and tells you everything about them. Like, if you want to buy from somebody who has a return policy, that's cool. But I feel I go above and beyond describing my instruments and things like that, that I can justify advertising my stuff as as-is. However, if for some reason the guitar doesn't work out for him, I do buy guitars back. I mean, generally they'll lose a couple hundred dollars because I have to then resell it. And I always tell them, you're gonna do much better selling this on your own, but some guys, they just like the ease and convenience. So what came back to me? I'm actually kind of happy this came back. Inside here is the Satin Arterial Burst 335. So I had sold this over the holiday weekend because this viewer of the show saw this review and demo. He wanted it to be his. And, you know, I really wasn't that keen on selling this one. I had priced it a little bit higher than I thought I should have because I wanted to keep it around. But I absolutely loved playing this in the review and demo doing that Arterial Burst tribute with the whole Arterial Burst 335. Like, it just makes sense, right? But the reason why he wanted to uh, get rid of this one is the fact that he just didn't like the neck. He said it was too big for him. I guess I can kind of see it, but it's just like a kind of a medium, slightly more than medium, chunky, rounded neck profile. But then again, we just reviewed that early 2000s 335, and that had like that weird D-shaped neck that's really thin. I'm betting that would probably be a good substitute for him if he wanted to try another 335. I mean, maybe he was just trying to buy something else because it was funny. He was hoping I had gotten that Blacklight Burst one that was listed this past week in the mod collection because he wanted to get that one. But unfortunately, for some dumb reason, I passed on that one. I should have bought it. That thing was cool. But yes, this looks like it was returned in good shape. Will I keep it this time? I don't know. I mean, if somebody wants to buy it for what I posted at, I'll let it go. But otherwise, this is a great guitar. And appears to have been returned in just about the same shape. I and mean, there's a little bit of sticky residue down here, probably from a strap and maybe a little bit of wear. But it's also possible that was there. So I'm not too worried about it. So welcome back home, Satin Arterial Burst. But you guys remember, I just told you there were two guitars that came back to me. And that other one, it's not that hard to tell from this case. <laughs> the Dave Mustaine Flying V. Oddly enough, traded back in for the exact same reason. He didn't like the neck profile. And he had tried to sell it himself, but he was tired of people harassing him, asking more than original retail price. People like that are the absolute worst. Like, if you don't want to pay somebody's price, fine, don't pay it. You don't need to message them and bad talk them just because they're asking current market value. Yes, these are, what, $27.99 brand new, but they're not out yet. It's a pre-release run. Everybody knew these things would be more valuable than they are. So I had sold this for $3,500, and I told him you could probably get $4,000 for that because there weren't many on the market at that point in time. But then, yeah, of course, once this one comes here, then there's another three, four of these on the market. So the values kind of fluctuate there. But in the long run, we don't even know if the pre-release ones are going to be different from the later ones. Like, I had somebody say this case what if this is only for the pre-release run cases and they change other things about them that would make these considerably more valuable in the future that's kind of like a gamble that you might have to take on something like this and i also wanted to address something there's a lot of rumors out there that one guy posted in his for sale ad for the dave mustaine flying v that said there were only 14 of these no, guys, no. That was 14 of these sold directly by the Gibson Garage. There's more than that that were shipped to other dealers. There's not only 14 silver ones out there. I can guarantee you that. I mean, sure, I could be wrong, but I honestly don't think I am. That was 14 sold by the Gibson Garage. And then who knows how many Sweetwater got. There was a Musician's Friend Guitar Center group. I got this one, I think, from AMS. I mean, there's all these other dealers that probably got a handful. I would guess there's probably about 50 of each color out there. Maybe even a tad bit more. It's hard to say. But I thought I'd use this moment to clear up some of that confusion. But it seems like most of them, other owners, have been saying that their latches have also been bent and whatnot. So far, we haven't seen any other bum inlay ones, so mine's kind of special in that aspect. But whatever. It came back. 
But speaking of interesting guitars, you guys remember towards the end of last year, we did the one pickup gamut of guitars that Music Zoo did. So inside here is not a PRS SE Silver Sky. <laughs> I can't tell if people want me to review that or not. I feel like people hate it when Fender and PRS like send out all those review units to the YouTubers. They all post them on the same day because they want to be first. But then some people want my take on it. So yes, we are going to review it, but I I'm gonna wait a week or two. You know, g give you guys a break on that kind of stuff. Try to provide you with some interesting guitar content in the meantime. But the Music Zoo, they were very happy with my videos. And so they sent me a Music Zoo gift card. And I really, really like expensive guitar stands. It was like a year or two ago, I got a couple of these Gibson branded ones. And then there's also the uh, unbranded ones by Zither if you want to save 50 bucks and not have it say Gibson. But these ones were wood. So I figured there's nothing I really wanted, wanted within the gift card amount. So I thought I would pick one of these guys up. This is that, but metal. So that should be interesting. I'll get that all worked up here real quick. And so far, I mean, it, it just seems like an exact replica of this, except for it's going to be a bit more heavy duty. It's not going to be as tall either. Hmm. And the base of this one is like the shape of a guitar pick. <laughs> heavy metal. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'd want to use that on your guitar. You'd probably break it. But so this has a open stand here. Like if they would have filled that in, this is really heavy. Like I would guess... 25 pounds something like that that seems about right and you've got like a, a a black mixed with a chrome this would be a fantastic stand for like one of those roswell roads mystery flying v things all right so first impressions you've got your little eagle here that's the only thing that really says prs but anybody who doesn't know guitars will be like oh that's an eagle so they won't really care if you have a les paul on this or not this is really heavy so it's kind of reassuring in that fact that your guitar is not just gonna swing around and fall over i mean that's the one thing about the wooden ones here is they are pretty light and you do need to condition these over time like put a little bit of lemon oil on them so they don't dry out but they also look very nice the problem is, is these are both like 200 bucks a pop. I think the Gibsons are actually 250, to be honest. And if I remember correctly, this one was 200. So let's go ahead and grab a guitar here, see how that is. Does it fit a flying V? Uh, yes and no. Like it's technically almost touching the floor and it is rubbing against here. So I don't know if they have a taller one or if this is only meant for PRS guitars. Cause I know this version has guitar and bass settings. So like I have taller ones and shorter ones. You can check out the Zither review and demo if you want to know more about that. Again, not sponsored to talk about these. We're just doing this for fun. Hmm. You know, on second impression of this one, taking it out of the case, it kind of does grow on you. So let's see how this is. Oh yeah. That's looking pretty nice here. I like the way that it's like very far from the back. Like you see how much space there is in between there? And they do have that little foam rubber pad right here that even if it does hit, it's not gonna hit against metal and it's not gonna damage your guitar. I guess if you're going super crazy, you could potentially crack your headstock if it dings against that, but that seems a little bit highly unlikely. So final verdict, it's a nice stand. Can I choose between one or the other? Not yet. Let, let me own it for a year or two and then I'll tell you the pros and cons. And since I had a little bit left on my gift card, I also picked something else up. Some strings, glass slide, things you need around the house, right? Thank you, Music Zoo. Reviewing the guitars was fun enough, but getting a cool stand and stuff, awesome. And then we got one last guitar today. We're running out of room. It's a repeat, but I felt like we needed another guitar in this episode. What do we have in here? We have another Gibson Captain Kirk Douglas SG. So I want to talk about this because I got more of an update. You know, about a year ago, it might not have been a full year ago, I was told these were out of production. 
and that they would not be produced again. So that's when prices started to go up. I mean, you can find one of these for 2,500 bucks, brand new price, buy it because the used market dictates between 2,850 to about 3,500. People ask more than that, but they generally don't get it. Demand is so high for these, they're just more valuable than they are brand new, which is understandable when you realize just how good these guitars are. I mean, you can check out my review and demo, or if you want to check out a more skilled player with one of these, I think uh, Paul Davids also did a video with one of these. They're just fantastic guitars. But if you're trying to hunt a deal on these, watch Gibson's website. Occasionally, they'll list these things on there. I had actually purchased two of these, but they canceled my green order for some reason and didn't tell me about it, which is a glitch that I've notified them of. But wow, this one was made very early 2021. Like it says, it's the fifth day of the year. I'm wondering if a shop went like out of business or like these just got lost somewhere and that's why we're getting it. Because I contacted my Gibson rep again to see, hey, what, what is actually going on with these? Are they in production or are they out of production? And he, he told me again, they're not in production. They've oversold what they've had, but yet I still see these things show up from time to time. So I, I, I really don't know. As far as the QC control on this one, I see a small dent on the neck at the 12th fret right here when you get it in the light. Not really going to affect playability. Other than that, it's just kind of a ebony finished guitar. You're going to have some defects like right here. There's like a knot in the wood. So that made the finish not be 100% completely even. You got some lacquer sinking around that area, but that's pretty common on pretty much all of these. Thankfully, it doesn't look like we have any finish cracks around the nut. Uh, you got a small one right there, but that's nothing. Usually these are much worse. It's very cool. You can check this one out in my shop if you're interested in buying one. All right, troglodytes. Thank you for tuning in to today's unboxing episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.